Hi, my name is Ryan McNally and this is my 29th coaching log on the UCLan Coaching Experience module. Uh, unfortunately, I've still got a bit of a bad throat, so apologies. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about how I've implemented my UA4B practices within, obviously, my academy environment. Looking at, reflecting on how it could be, imp could be implemented, what was relevant for my age group and working alongside other coaches on the UA4B and also what do I believe I already do that I did on the UA for B, kind of what I already do in my sessions that I learned about. So looking at the first kind of topic for today, reflecting on how it could be implemented, definitely there was a few things that stuck with me. Um, for example, the three R's, repetition, realism, relevance. So kind of making sure they get a high amount of repetitions, obviously to to practice more and more and get used to what they're doing. Relevance to the game, um, is it something that relates to the, how the game may function or a snapshot of the game? And realistic, obviously, is it re realistic to the game? Is there a 1v1 situation? Is it a 2v1? Obviously, you know, if it's not realistic, like a 5v1, that's not realistic and they're not really going to benefit from much from that kind of stuff. Um, so kind of making sure I implement the three R's into my coaching session and also confirming my step principle every single time. So space, time, equipment and players, you know, making sure is the space the right size, if not adjust it mid-session. Are my timings too long where the players are tired now and not performing the high reps that they need to? The equipment, am I using the right footballs for that specific moment or should I use the foot soles or the five lights or the mini balls? And the players, is my session correct for the ability of the players? Is the right Have I got the right numbers or do I need to adapt my session? All of that needs to come under consideration when I'm, when I'm preparing and, and implement, implementing my session. Kind of looking at what was relevant for my age group and making sure, like re linking back to the three R's, they play a lot of 3v3s and 5v5s, which they do in a game. They don't play 11 aside, obviously. So making sure that my sessions are based around little 1v1s or 3v3s at max because that's the max that they're ever going to play. Obviously in a 5v5, <clears throat> it's broken down. There'll never be all five players from both teams around the ball. It may be a max of two players from each team or a 1v1 or a 3v3 at most. So making sure that it's relevant to my age group and it's focused on what they're doing in a game is really, really important that I've learned from my UA for B. And also kind of briefly new before as well, obviously making sure that my players can relate to this in the game. Looking at working alongside other coaches on UA for B was really good. Getting their knowledge and using it and adapting it. You know, stealing stuff from them, which I thought could be useful for myself and my age group. Um, and also bouncing off people and getting to know different people and their different ideas and perspectives on the game is really important. Looking at some research done by Rocky and Pelletier in 2017, I found that uh, if coaches surround themselves with supportive others, they will benefit not only from increased need satisfaction, but also from de decreased need frustration. So by bouncing these ideas off each other and, and getting these new ideas, we're actually increasing our satisfaction and reducing our fr frustration of planning sessions, of delivering them, of kind of not having any coaching points to go off. We're actually decreasing the chances of that by surrounding ourselves with beneficial others and, you know, significant others. And our satisfaction is going to go through the roof, which I feel like is really crucial through for a coach, you know, believing what you're doing is correct and having the support of others is really, really important. Uh, the last topic I'm going to cover, cover is what do I believe I already do? Kind of what I already implement prior to my UA for B practices that confirm what I'm doing is correct. So looking at my support methods and my coaching methods um, and also my teaching methods. So my support, I'm always little drive-bys and, and trying to be as enthusiastic and, and, and as productive as possible because I feel like if you're enthusiastic, the players will be as well. Um, my coaching methods, I feel like I use different methods for different people. Some people... I can stand on the sideline and and 
and help them from there. Whereas other people I might need to wander over to and just pull them to one side for a little drive-by just so they get that personal touch. And I'm also using a stop stand still as well. So I've got three different styles of coaching um, and also you know, delivering that trial and error. I use trial and error loads with a bit of command sometimes, but trial and error really allows them to go and problem solve and discover and explore. And I feel like that's really beneficial. And that kind of links in with different learning styles. Obviously you've got people who want to learn with hands-on, some people who want to see a video or a diagram or a tactics board and some people who just want to hear. So kind of catering to all of them, learning and coaching styles is what I believe I already do. And that UEFA B has helped me reinforce that I'm implementing it in the right way. And I want to con continue to carry on developing and improving in myself and my coaching.